Hello there and happy Halloween to all of my lovelies out there. Um, it is the end of October, which means several things. First off, it means that it's the end of Inktober, which I have now completed every damn day of. Check out my tentacle girl, yeah. Um, which is why I have such a small stack of books to review this month. Um, I've been drawing ink drawings every day, so I have not had time to do my normal comic inking or anything else, and I haven't had much time to read, so I've only got three books that I've read in October. Um, the first of which is A Confederacy of Dunces, which is an interesting book to be reading in these modern and strange times, and an interesting book to be reading within the same month that I read another book. Um, but. Uh, I don't even really know why I wanted to read this. I think this was one of the, like, you know, it's the, it shows up on the great books list, on the well-read whatever's list and everything like that, and I think that's why I was like, I should read that. Um, I didn't hate it. It was a little bizarre, um, uh, which, uh, intentional, um, <laughs> like, uh, Tool intended it to be bizarre. Um, it was very funny actually, um, but in like really strange ways, um, kind of like a, a not funny haha, -ha, funny sad. Um, Ignatius Riley is an interesting and deep but not necessarily complex character and it's sort of weird getting into his head and the reason that's interesting to read in these modern and terrifying times is because uh, Tool somehow managed to predict the neo-reactionary movement in the character of Ignatius Riley and his desire to return to a sort of medieval spinning on the wheel of fortune, serfs and lords sort of a thing, and um, a little weird that he uh, managed to write a character who could so clearly be a shit lord, edge lord shit poster these days, <laughs> um, which is exactly what Ignatius Riley kept making me think of this dude screaming at his mom as he's deciding that he doesn't need to do anything in the world and trying to prove his own worthlessness. I, it's just such an interesting character. And there are lots of interesting characters in this book, and I know what most of them are supposed to be criticizing. Sometimes with Ignatius it's a little, I mean, is it the, the institution of college? Is it, um, it, people who hold on to archaic ideas, is it gluttony, is it whatever? There's so many things to criticize about Ignatius that it's it's uh, impossible to tell what the primary criticism is. But overall I thought this was a funny book but at times irritating to read. Um, and it's one of those things where like people try to be like, I think people feel bad because this was published um, posthumously after Tool committed suicide and his mom like brought it to a publisher and was like, you know, my son has written a great book, you must read my son's great book. And it's like, I mean, it's not awful, I'm glad it got published, but I think that people tend to build it up more than it may be deserving. I don't know. It just left me a little cold in some ways. Um, and the theme for this month could have just been the fuck did I just read because I don't think I wrote a single thing that was like just a straightforward like oh this is an easy gonna jam right through it and have a good time with this fun simple concept nope because the next book after that is Shirley Jackson's uh, Hangzaman or Hangman I'm not actually sure how you're supposed to pronounce this um another good like theme for the books this month was you know disassociation for fun and profit. Um, Shirley Jackson is an author who does a really good job of making you question reality. In some ways I think if I'm like categorizing and gonna be putting people on my bookshelves like Shirley Jackson and Philip K. Dick are gonna have to end up right next to one another because it really both of them do a very good job of questioning what is reality, why do people do what they do, did this happen or didn't it happen? Like it's this really interesting interweaving of like almost magic realism um, that I think is absolutely what we are seeing happen in this book in particular and which I enjoy a lot. I can definitely see myself going back and rereading this multiple times. I can see myself re-experiencing it and trying to 
have like, it feels like it's going to be a mystery novel every time like what is real and and going through and doing multiple readings of it I think that it would be really interesting to do different interpretations and ask you know if everything is actually happening th on this reading or if she's hallucinating everything in this reading or if you know this is a story she's writing in this reading the the main character whose name I have now forgotten because I'm awful um, Elizabeth? Natalie, Natalie. Um, yeah, if, if Natalie's hallucinating or if everything is really happening that Natalie believes is happening or if she's just writing characters in a story, like, I think it would be really interesting to go through and do multiple readings through multiple lenses and really see what kind of breaks down from this. I enjoyed it. It's fucking weird, but I like it. Um, and we'll be reading it again, absolutely. Like, I don't know that I can say that for confederacy of dunces i actually don't even know if i'm going to keep this um i got two copies of a confederacy of dunces for christmas last year because there was some confusion like my cousin gave me one and my mother-in-law gave me one so um i'm definitely going to give one of those away i don't know if i'm going to keep the other though or if it will be worth it to do so um and then follow that up with the weirdest book which i finished reading this morning at like 3 a.m um so a good Halloween book. It's a Neo Reaction, a Basilisk by uh, Philip Sandifer. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, who is somebody I know of through Tumblr. And that's how I came to support the Kickstarter for this, which is the Conspiracy Zine edition that I have because it's all photocopies of typewritten pages over, taped over blank plates. Because this book is not a novel. Um, it, it's not exactly literary criticism. It's not straight philosophy. Uh, but it is a philosophical and literary exploration of the fantastical founders and tenets of the neo-reactionary movement. So it was these these two books this month kind of fucked with my head. Um, all of the books this month kind of fucked with my head, as did drawing every day, because it's been a busy October, and yay, NaNoWriMo starts two hours from now, <laughs> so hooray. Um, but, uh, yeah, this was fascinating. This made me realize, like, how much more I need to read Blake, or, or how much more deeply I need to read Blake, because I've read Blake. I mean, if you end up in any romantics class for literature, if you even some Victorian lit classes, like, and I was a lit major, so I obviously have read some Blake, but fuck, clearly not enough. Um, but this was, I honestly don't know who I can recommend this to. It's like, I kind of want to recommend it to people who I'm friends with when we talk about political stuff, but most of my friends who I would recommend this to for political stuff aren't people who are terribly into literary stuff and you kind of have to be into both of those things and also have a firm grasp of both philosophy and literary criticism. Not just the enjoyment of literature, but the theory behind literary criticism, which is, I understand, not something that everybody is able to enjoy. <laughs> and in, at some points in this book, I did enjoy the critical leaps and the drawing of different kinds of evidence in from other forms of literature and or other forms of art and at some points I was like that's a fucking reach <laughs> like where's your textual uh, textual support and textual support sorry <laughs> um but uh all in all I did enjoy this and Sandifer has also published some essays that are available to the backers of the Kickstarter and I think that he's got up in a few other places that I've checked out, which are also fantastic. Uh, I think you can buy this as an ebook. I'm like 95% sure that you can buy this as an ebook under Ereditorium Press. Ereditorium Press. I can't pronounce anything. I'm one of those people who only reads words and doesn't talk to people, so I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce things. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, Philip Sandifer, Neo Reaction of Basilisk. If criticism of Curtis Yarvin, Eliza Yudkowsky, um, and Nick Land in combination with discussions of Hannibal, Blake, and 
I, hauntological thought are <laughs> intriguing to you, then this is something that you would probably tremendously enjoy reading. Um, so that was the books that I read last month. I have started on The Cuckoo's Egg, which is one of those books that everybody tells hackers and people who are hacker adjacent that they have to read, and which is something that I wanted to read anyway, and that'll just combine nicely with the uh, hacker adjacent facts of my life. And then um, I didn't really have a non-books book thing planned because uh, I'm not really fucking thinking straight right now, but I guess I could talk about um, Eliza Yudkowsky, who's discussed in Near Action Battleist, because I brought this up a while back. Um, I talked about the fact that I was reading the end of Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality and that I wanted to talk about that under its own post at some point and that I was really enjoying it. It was a decent introduction to rationality and everything and it's like, yeah, I feel like some scales falling off my eyes. Um, I got to the end of that story and was really fucking angry. There was... It really made me realize that the first 20 to 30 chapters were great, were fun, were, were based around an interesting conceit, and were something that I was happy and enjoyed reading. Um, the other 110 fucking chapters, however, were just kind of like, you had that promise of what was great in the beginning. You had that, like, well, it could, it could get back to that point. Obviously, he's capable of writing something as amusing and well-paced and funny as these first few chapters. It's got to get back there at some point, doesn't it? And no, it never had to get back there, and it never... It, it attempted to build on these, like, stair steps of logic that it just didn't manage to. Um, it, you know, it wanted to teach you things that it didn't teach effectively. It... Bayesian fucking weirdness with Yudkowsky and the less wrong folks. Um, <sighs> for people who claim to be rationalists, like... This is something that's perhaps a little too in-depth and requires perhaps too much yelling and specific definition for on um, the end of one of my videos. <laughs> uh, suffice it to say that Eliza Yudkowsky's Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality is a long work of fan fiction that teaches a very particular viewpoint and has a tremendously unsatisfying final third um, and a fairly boring middle and a really great beginning that never lives up to its promise. Um, and that's kind of the problem with reading things that are being written as they're being written, is that you keep going on the promise of it, you keep going on the promise of it, and you can, it took me two years because it was still being published for a long time after I started reading it. And so because you've invested that time, the whole sunk cost fallacy and everything, you want to keep going, you want to get to the end. And sometimes you get to the end and What's that creeping behind you? Where have you been walking in circles? Who's the monster in the dark? And it's... It's a fucking quarrel? What? <sighs> so disappointing! <laughs> anyway, um, this probably doesn't make much sense. It's a very long video. I'm sorry for everything. Happy Halloween! Be safe! And I clearly need to eat something and get some sleep and perhaps more or less caffeine. One or the other. We'll figure it out. Thanks very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more. Leave howlingly angry comments in the comments if you are a uh, Yudkowsky fan, because there are plenty of those out there who seem to enjoy doing that. And uh, yeah, y'all have a uh, great month. I will see you in November. Hopefully we'll be reading more, but also maybe going to be trying to do uh, National Novel Writing Month, so who the fuck knows? Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Y'all have a great day.